The Montreal Canadiens are one win away from the Stanley Cup final. That's Aaron Ward and Dennis Bernstein. I'm David Pignota. Our coverage brought to you by Bitbuy, Canada's number one cryptocurrency platform. And gentlemen, as I said, the Habs one away from the Cup final. They're now up 3-2 on the Golden Knights, and they tie a franchise record for seven road wins in the playoffs. Wardo, we talked about this in the pregame show. The Canadians just needed to do what they were doing last game. They did that and more tonight. Yeah, the amazing part is they actually got better. And if you think about it, they've been pretty comfortable with how they played through this series. They've gotten better and better as it's gone on. But if you look at the way the game was played in small areas, they surgically just were so easily getting out of their own end, getting the puck out on breakouts. You can think about the puck getting to the boards, up the center, gone. Vegas could sustain no pressure. From a defensive perspective, the four horses back there on D were fantastic. Sherratt physically seven hits in the game. Edmondson, again, a, a beast out there. Weber being Weber. And Petrie, I mean, it's funny to see that, that of the four, Petrie was the least noticed because he didn't have to be, right, in light of his injury. And from a maturation standpoint, I think this is a great place for the Montreal Canadiens. All these young guys getting live experience and understanding what the playoffs are all about and rising to the occasion. So for me, I look at the, the Suzuki to Foley and to no line. Suzuki himself right now is emerging as almost like the, the early on Steve Eisenman that realizes that with the skill set he has, he has to also show something different. Blocking shots, defensively responsible, getting back when it's really sorely needed to cover up for his teammate. This guy's a complete player. And Nicole Caulfield. We talked about it before the game that he starts kind of chirping in, a, in an indirect way about having Laner talk about knowing what maybe Caulfield was doing. And he has that little arrogance about his response about, you know, I'm glad I got them thinking. Well, here's the truth. He's backing it up. He's, he's not playing the first game of the playoffs, and now he's, a, he's, a, he's an essential part to the success of the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal has a calmness and a confidence to their game that you wouldn't know would come from a team that barely eat their way in, what, two or three games over 500 coming into the playoffs. This is utterly amazing, and that is why I'm paying homage to, to Mark Bergevin with my crushed burgundy tuxedo jacket because I feel like closeout's coming. I think the word that Wara used, the second word, confidence. This is a supremely confident team, and right now your Con Smythe winner, other than Braden Point, is Carey Price. It starts and ends with him. He's been phenomenal. He's had a lot of help from his defense, like Wardo mentioned, with respect to not a lot of high danger chances. But this team is just the air of confidence around this team. When they do make mistakes, and it hasn't been very often, they correct them, and they don't give Vegas a sniff around the net. Here's the other thing Carey Price has also done for this team right now, is in light of what Vegas has done to the Colorado Avalanche in the past, Carey Price now gets out on every dump in. He either plays it himself or... There's a quick pass to a defenseman, and these D feel like they have so much time. I mean, Edmondson's not known for having the greatest hands, but these guys have a level of composure where it's such a, a facilitated game where your goalie can put you in an ideal position, and Carey Price is not just stopping the puck, but he's exiting the puck for this team on a level that it, that it makes it so simple to play the game. You know, we touched on this after the last game, Dennis, that you know, it didn't matter who was going to be in net for the Vegas Golden Knights going into this game. They needed to provide some offense and up their offensive game. They didn't do that in game five. They had one Pastoretti with the lone goal in this one. And we started to see Vegas tinker a little bit with their lineup as the game progressed in an attempt to find a way to get the goal scorers scoring goals. But we only had one for the Vegas Golden Knights. What's going on with the Vegas Golden Knights and, and their lack of overall offense? Well, the first 40 minutes tonight were horrible. It's the only way to describe their first 40 minutes. It was terrible. And when you listen to the press conference, Pete DeBoer, Alex Petrangelo, they're searching for answers, Dave. They don't have the answers. That's the problem with this team. Like they know they're deficient on offense. They know the power play can't do anything. Yet they're searching this deep in the series for answers on offense. I don't know if they have it because, as Warren mentioned, like in game four, they got outplayed as well. So this team is leveraged on their offense. And like Last season in the semifinals, when they went out four games to one against Dallas, they're suffering offensively. And right now, now they get big. They better find answers quickly when they go back to Montreal for game six, or there will not be a game seven. Here's the other bigger issue for Vegas right now is where's the psyche of this team, right? So Stevenson comes back in the lineup. You feel like as a, as a team member, I know from my experience in the playoffs, when everybody's there in the playoffs, no injuries. So now he comes back in and the familiarity is back in that locker room. You know that the four lines you're basically going to roll are going to be, you know, top notch. 
Well, the problem is you get into this game and, and Montreal finds it easy to counter it. So you're not getting that push back where there should be a euphoria to getting that component back in your lineup. It doesn't exist. And the fact that you then have to tinker with your lineup and Stevenson's being moved around and Tuck's being, like everybody is out of sorts. So not only is, is Vegas not feeling comfortable in their game, now they're getting to a place that's unfamiliar for them is they can't get it done. How you manhandle Colorado towards the end of that series and get into a Montreal team that everybody, you know, wasn't even an underdog. They, they shouldn't, by all estimations, be in this series. Now Montreal is just taking it to them and, and no one has an answer, including the players and coaches. Yeah, a lot of frustration coming out of this group. We saw it from a number of players smashing their sticks on the ice, smashing them against the bench. It's going to take a lot over these next 24 to 36 hours for the Vegas Golden Knights to get their composure back and try to stay in this series. Game six gets going on Thursday night from the Bell Center in Montreal at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll have more on this series as the days progress. That's Aaron Ward and Dennis Bernstein. I'm David Pinota.